We have a game that is not profitable, a CEO handling their own HR complaints and some behind the scenes updates. Let's talk about it. G'day everybody, I'm Bloody Drongo and I have been covering the new era of Worm Online and all of the associated news that has come along with that. And first of all, I do have to apologize for a bit of an extended absence. And that is due to the fact that after posting my last two videos, I received the, uh, vi the email that you can see on screen here uh, regarding my uh, videos exposing some of the uh, things that have been happening behind closed doors at Worm Online after a public leak um, on Twitter and basically going through that. And I received a privacy strike against my channel, which meant that for the last little while now, I've been waiting for YouTube to conduct a review because basically I went through, I looked at YouTube's uh, policy, privacy policy, make sure I was in compliance with that. I also received independent legal advice to ensure that I was legally speaking uh, totally fine as well. Um, for the sake of YouTube's privacy policy, the only things that needed to be, um, you know, I would thought maybe there could be an issue with was under the the context that there was a full name or financial information disclosed in the leaked documents. Under this, it doesn't exactly disclose what financial information constitutes. Um, the only mention of any kind of finances in the leaked documents are, pertain to the fact that there is mention that Worm is not a profitable venture. And the only full name leaked is the name of Krista uh, Elmson. So uh, the CEO. Now, um, when rev YouTube reviews this, they do consider public interest, newsworthiness and consent as factors. Now, <clears throat> one of the important things to understand, um, about publicly traded companies is that when you become a CEO or a board member or some kind of public, um, relationship with a publicly traded company, there is an implied consent given that you no longer have exactly the same rights as a, uh, a normal standard private citizen. So me um, uh, displaying the full name of Krista within those videos from the leaked Slack uh, logs did, to the advice that I have received does not constitute a privacy breach because they have basically waived their uh, expectations of privacy by becoming a um, CEO of a publicly traded company, um, which makes it then newsworthy to report on the conduct and the happenings within uh, and outside of a publicly traded company. So that's where I've been. Unfortunately, YouTube, it seems, does not provide an update or a closure um, when these things have been reviewed. But basically, I just wanted to wait a little while to ensure that YouTube had enough time, ample time to review it uh, before I went about posting any further information about you know what was discussed in those in those videos and also i have reached out to uh krista directly because i suspect he um was the aggrieved party within this privacy complaint and i did reach out in good faith to try and contact him and resolve any concerns uh from that perspective but as of this time uh, as of recording there has been no further updates from that side of things so um, that's why I didn't immediately launch a, a shortened condensed version. Like I originally suggested that I would do. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to do today. Plus there is some other newsworthy bits and pieces. Now, the logs in particular that we're talking to, if you haven't seen the full videos here, I'll give a brief, uh, overview of what they are. So there is chat logs from the team Slack, the internal team Slack, and also from the team forums that relate to a whole bunch of internal issues and detail in quite explicit detail, the immense amount of internal friction within the worm team at the moment, especially in conjunction in or in in opposition towards uh, game chess group and their CEO, Krista. And, uh, you know, within this, there is a couple of key points that are worth taking away. Number one is the fact that um, within this, Krista has mentioned the fact that Worm is not a profitable venture, which 
I don't know whether to believe or not, but that is what the information that has been distributed internally is, is that Worm is not profitable. Uh, it is important to mention that he doesn't explicitly say Game Chess Group, he says explicitly Worm. Now, I would believe that Game Chess Group may not be profitable as an entity because they've got a lot of other ventures that may don't appear to be doing particularly well. I personally would be surprised if I saw that Worm specifically was not profitable, but that's one of the bullet points. One of the other key things to note is as well that Krista, uh, as the CEO, has had multiple uh, staff members leave out from under him and also multiple staff members basically expressing you know, discomfort uh, in the team environment, in particular dealing with him. And a lot of these issues essentially amount to human resources or HR complaints and Krista is saying, you know, if you have an issue with me as a HR, you know, a HR issue, reach out to me directly and we will resolve it. Now, uh, anybody who has worked in a professional environment and also, you know, more specifically in HR will tell you that that is a pretty problematic thing for a CEO to do is to involve them directly uh, themselves directly into a HR complaint resolution process against that is against them specifically. Um, so that's a, a, a particularly big problem and that is definitely noteworthy within there, although we have not got any further information about that. And it's entirely possible that that is something that has already been addressed and already been dealt with. The other thing to, is uh, that was particularly noteworthy beyond just the negative atmosphere within the team was the fact that Krista um, was uh, has discussed within the Worm forums, the Worm team forums, that uh, he was the one who was directly responsible for commissioning the new website and actually quality checking that. And that <laughs> and the fact that the Worm team was not involved in that until the very last moment, uh, less than 24 hours before it was due to, uh, to, due to go live was the first time that the Worm team actually saw the website um, for the first time. So that was eye-opening and I guess not surprising in the respect that I had already speculated due to what was published on the website, that there was no way that there was it was possible that uh, a, somebody who was familiar with the game would have gone, yeah, okay, this looks good, let's publish it. So um, a CEO essentially doing their own quality checking whilst not being familiar enough with the product to ensure that it's quality is kind of weird. Um, so just a few bizarre decisions um, but yeah, if you are interested in this, um, I'll, I'll cite again and link the documents that these, the source material for all of these, as I always do, um, down below in the description of this video. And I do have, like I mentioned before, two longer videos that go through these two, th um, folders here and all of the screenshots contained within in explicit detail and probably to an excruciating level of detail because they are very long and I totally understand that not everybody has the appetite for that, but that is the key notes to take away from those two big uh, folders there. Now, in response to all of this, there has been a few things that have happened since. Number one, the biggest thing that has kind of happened is that since the, those leaks happened, it feels as though the Worm team has kind of closed ranks and has become a lot more silent and a lot less robust. Part of that perception may be the fact that they've lost their community manager. Demona was directly fired. That was what was uh, one of the departures that was leaked. And the context of that leak, um, you know, being given in those documents we discussed before. So Demona was fired. So there's no official community manager to speak with the community and keep them updated and kind of, you know, let them know what's going on. Uh, besides a couple of conversations that have happened around the dev space and J2 with Rift up, uh, potential updates and stuff like that and updates to mechanics, which is strictly business, I suppose, um, very, very little has been coming out of the team. So I can only imagine that they're probably trying to work through and uh, replace all of the roles that they've lost because they have lost a substantial amount of staff. And number two, I guess there's probably a, a greater sense of solidarity because unfortunately with the fact that the, the logs had been leaked, the internal logs have been leaked, 
it, it probably feels like from the Worms, uh, Worms staff perspective as a bit of an attack against them specifically, even though I would say anybody who's read those logs is probably not going to walk away with a negative perception of the worm staff themselves um but that's the general sense now in response to uh krista's announcement basically inviting um you know in this one here letter from the ceo um he basically invited saying hey I'll, i'm happy to show the financials for worm um and so i've put out a uh, in whatever format the community and staff decides now i've put out a public post here back at the end very end of july so a couple of weeks ago now basically saying to krista hey you know if you want to show the financials for worm full pnl financials for code club along with any interim financials for the current year I would love to see them. Now, it's important to note here that Worm is traded under Code Club AB, and Cl Code Club AB is a subsidiary of Game Chess Group. Game Chess Group owns Cl Code Club AB. Now, the reason why I'm particularly interested in the PL for Code Club specifically is because if you get that in of itself, that is going to be a much clearer picture of the financial state of Worm as opposed to when you start condensing and moving money around the other different entities within GCG and within its other subsidiary companies, because it does have some other entities involved. Now, as of right now, no, nothing has come of this. We've not heard any additional updates from Krista and he's not um, honored, I guess, the um, agreement or the, you know, the expectation that he'd set that they would indeed... Um, you know, share, share those financials. Now, um, I, I, again, I, I think I've said previously that I would be surprised if he does this, but I would love it if he did. Um, you know, he's under no obligation to share this information with any of us, but he's offered it. So if he's offered it, why not? <laughs> why not ask for it? So we'll see. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, there's been a couple of other bits and pieces that have gone on since then. Uh, there, It has been picked up that there is a classified ad being put out in the Philippines subreddit looking for a TikTok editor for Worm Online, which is an interesting development. Um, what, TikTok is probably a platform that is not likely to be probably the strongest for Worms content, although I personally can see a strategy or a couple of different strategies where it could potentially work. Um, but it would not be my personal place where I would first start if I was in the driving seat making these decisions. Of course, there is entirely possible that this is not actually the official Worm Online team uh, looking for it. It hasn't been confirmed either way, but an interesting thing to note um, that has been picked up on. Uh, next up, we have actually, we'll talk about this one here first before we do that. Uh, that is that Enki made a post at the very start of the month, basically saying that he was going to be making uh, a new event that is going to be a kind of an animal racing event. And there's been a couple of updates since. Now, it's, I guess, kind of, you know, it's moving along. It's supposed to be happening towards the end of this month. Now, the interesting thing about this is that I had assumed that this meant that Enki was now confirmed to be going into and had been rehired as kind of an events coordinator role, which is what was kind of talked about in the leaked logs that we mentioned earlier, and that he had basically gone from being contracted as the head GM for Worm Online into this events coordinator role. Now, uh, that was my assumption when this first got posted and like, oh, cool. Okay. Inky's back on the team and he's going to be doing stuff. Fantastic. We love to see it. However, that may not actually be the, the case. So, um, I was sent these logs here from global, um, from the 10th of August. So, uh, it's nine days after, um, he's made his post organizing this new public event and basically it's Enki talking about, hey, you know, um, I actually, I don't actually have a contract with Game Chess Group at the moment. We'll see if Game Chess Group rehires me. 
and it seems as though the new CEO, so Krista, is really busy. So Enki's situation is kind of fluid, which is just really bizarre and kind of interesting. And the amount of time that um, is kind of passing at the moment without stuff really forging ahead and actually changing, I suppose, is a little bit troubling to me because we still haven't had the website resolved even though Katzper has confirmed that on her side she has sent off all of the information required for the website to be updated although admittedly the website the actual the structural changes and the uh the asset changes and everything like that apparently that's being managed by a third party which is not uncommon uh, for small businesses to have a you know contract out to a company to look after their websites and do that technical stuff, uh, but it's taking a very very long time. It's you know well over a month now uh, since this was first addressed, and they've got had the assets now for at least a couple of weeks as of the time of recording, as I understand it. So, um, and and then obviously Enki has been in limbo with his contract and obviously is unsure of where he stands. So that's a, an interesting piece of information there to kind of note as an update. Now, the f I guess the next thing is yesterday, Pomona has come out with a topic called behind the scenes update, which basically goes through and talks about how the last recruitment post was a huge success and they've had a lot of responses. And that's probably a good thing because they've probably got a huge amount of vacancies to fill at the moment. So uh, best of luck to everybody who has applied in those roles. And hopefully we see some good people going in to fill those seats. Um, they've, she also, Pomona also mentions in the, the post here that they are still looking for applications for the community manager position. And it looks as though Pomona is now handling those recruitments herself, which is uh, an interesting choice. What comes of that? I actually have no idea. Um, but honestly, as I've mentioned before, a community manager is an extremely valuable and important role within an MMO or any kind of gaming community. And having that role filled as quickly as possible is definitely something that needs to be... Um, needs to be filled as soon as possible and also confirming some of the other things that we've seen previously and talked about previously that pratty girl has been promoted to lead forum moderator fence joper jumper has been promoted to lead discord moderator and olfus has been promoted to lead wormpedia management so uh, all all of those leads that have left of their own volition have quit under the uh, the yoke of uh, GCG have been all replaced. Um, so that's probably good that they've got those capabilities back and they've locked in those new, new positions and hopefully they can do some good work in those positions. Um, they mentioned that Enki is currently working on events, um, even though I guess he's not technically yet hired as an event coordinator. So that's kind of interesting. Then we have uh, some development news. And the news there is that they don't have any news yet, <laughs> which which is a bit disappointing, I guess, but understandable. I mean, Pomona's not a dev and there has been a lot of shakeups within the dev team. And I imagine with that has come some changes in priority as well. So not a lot to go through here and some people have commented a little bit disappointed with this but i think one of the key things about this is is that i think there is a level of awareness from the team that they have been pretty quiet without a community manager and this post at least kind of at least gives the impression that yeah, the 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 lights are still on there's still people here and and things are still happening so even if it's a bit of a you know a no a nothing burger announcement um it i think it was it, it serves a deeper purpose than just beyond the information that's contained within it i think there's a a deeper implication within it um so i don't know what the next update will be but hopefully we'll see some some good and big changes very very soon and also some new staff members coming into the those those missing roles 
And then finally, we finally got around to getting our uh, patch notes or, or uh, patches for August and August's monthly skin. And my God, this is actually one of my favorite skins that Worm has ever released. Like, no kidding. This is absolutely gorgeous. The, the soul skin, soul shield. <laughs> this is this is beautiful. Um, kudos to whoever designed this. This is absolutely top-notch work. Um, if it's Saruman, man, congratulations. Absolutely amazing. Uh, we've got a few bug bug fixes, patch notes. Nothing too huge, but some basic, basic quality of life stuff, which is a good idea. So that's good. Um, but again, not a huge amount of progress. It is worth mentioning that there was a couple of delays in doing the weekly restarts um back towards the end of june start of uh sorry end of july start of august and that has now since been resolved so whatever skill gap or whatever cause was driving that has now apparently been resolved which is which is good news so yeah, overall, that's kind of the cliff notes of what has been happening from both my end, from the previous videos, if, in case you didn't watch the whole thing and were waiting for a bit of a bulletproof summary. Those are the key points that came up within that. And also a bit of a recent update on some of the news that has been coming out from the Worm team over the past couple of days as well. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll keep you guys updated as always as soon as new information becomes available to me. Uh, if you do find any relevant news that is publicly available and do want to bring it to my attention, feel free to reach out to me either on Twitter, Worm Forums, or on my business email. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.